Welcome people, yet again I have a, another review for you today. It is a band from Massachusetts, a three piece in fact called Scalpel. So Scalpel's Sora and Skin is out right now on Severed Records and it's definitely one to have a gander at if you're into the likes of Suffocation, Dying Fetus, Origin, you know the really real staple death metal bands and maybe it might be one for the Nile and Immolation fans. So the album opens up with the track Ripe. It starts with a real black and death metal vibe, but then kind of hits older realms. Think Suffocation or maybe like a heavily down-tuned Dying Fetus. But then it also, um, interestingly, throws in some technical uh, sounds as well, which is pretty cool. Um, there is something more sinister there with Scalpel than there is compared to maybe like Suffocation, though. There's so much adventure with the songs. There's blast beats and tempo changes, and it skips into small solos and then drags down to these like really frightening atmospheric intervals where you can actually kind of picture a dark night with smoke coming across kind of thing. Um, so a real kind of sort of like London Jack the Ripper I would go for. But also on the other hand there is a lot of thrashy punk style drumming um, which is sort of opposed to the, you know, the real slammy death metal chunky chug beats that you get. Um, so it's a lot more thrashy, a lot more fast, a lot more ch 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 um, But one thing that probably annoys me um, about the album on the whole is that as soon as part of the song starts to develop and you really kind of, you know when you get that hook and that riff and you really start to get into it and you think, oh it's going to go somewhere good, it just switches up changes completely into something else. And I think it really prevents me getting into the album as a whole, although I think the intention with the album was to be quite fresh, um, for example, I mean The Woodsman opens up with this giant beefy slam style riff and then suddenly disintegrates into something completely different. Um, there's, I mean, I keep going on about breakdowns, there's this fantastic breakdown on the Sentinels of Severed Flesh and it was definitely a highlight for me because I really think that's my, my preferred style of metal. Um, and maybe gut mulch, is that how you pronounce it? Um, the vocals became a lot more brutal and um, because most of the vocal technique is kept fairly on the light side, I think kind of Randy Blythe from Lamb of God slash with Frank Mullins from Suffocation. Um, but technically on this track, on the gut mulch track, you it kind of goes into Travis Ryan's human air vocals, you know, because um, on um, the, the monolith of inhumanity it's really, you know, really guttural and brutal, whereas I think in some of the earlier days it's definitely a little bit lighter in tone. Um, so it's kind of in that sort of territory, hopefully that's built up um, a picture for you anyway. Um, but back to the album on the whole. So halfway through there are some clear black and doom metal influences creeping in and anyone who's watched previous reviews knows that doom is not my preference of music, um, but it does add to the atmospheric side of it, it does add to that kind of brings more of a picture into my smoky alleyway nighttime scene and, um, and they, they, it's been executed really well, it has been done well. They really kind of build up the intensity when combining like the, the variety in each song and then coming into these little small intervals and it definitely adds something really sinister and almost frightening with it but I quite like it, I like the way it's been done. Um, and another letdown actually, we'll go with another negative, is the production which it drags the album down, which is a real shame, um, because it is a good album, but the production is very muddy and it tends to drown everything out, which is a shame because where the drums give this kind of, it should be giving this vomit inducing thud, it's kind of more of a splat and it's a real shame because I really want to hear more of the drums because they sound really interesting and I want to hear more of them, so um, that's a bit of a shame. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I'll end on a high. What's really exciting about this album is that it is definitely intriguing from the first listen, from get-go onwards. You do kind of want to keep listening, although obviously, like I say, there's a lot of jumping, a lot of variety, but you play the first track and you kind of want to know where it's going to go. So <laughs> although it's, it jumps around and it's completely unpredictable, you do want to know how it ends, um, you know, and there is so much movement. Um, but I suppose to put a positive spin on it, that's actually quite a good thing because it just means that you're going to have to listen to it time and time again to, uh, to try and build up an idea.